Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, thanks for all your lovely comments, your thumbs up and all that good stuff for my resource folder, Flourish Style, that I created last week. And this week in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group, our challenge is to use some of the stuff from this a folder or whatever you created, whatever way you gathered your materials together, to actually make some sort of journal. Uh, it could be a junk journal, it could be an art journal, whatever you want it to be, but some sort of journal. I am going to make what I would call an artist book, and I have here some offcuts of canvas that I had. Uh, these pieces had been in a kind of tea bath, just to take the kind of raw colour off them, just showing you roughly here the sizes. And I'm actually going to use two pieces, but the front piece is going to be a bit smaller than the back piece. So I'm just going to look through my folder here to pull out some bits and pieces that I want to include in my journal. Now, as I said, I I'm intending this to be what I would call an artist book, and I've spoken about artists' books before, but I thought I would just give you the definition from the Smithsonian. I mean, there's quite a lengthy article on artist books, several articles, in fact, but I think a good uh, brief definition is an artist's book is a medium of artistic expression that uses the form or function of book as inspiration. It is the artistic initiative seen in the illustration, choice of materials, creation process, layout and design that makes it an art object. And that's what I'm seeing this as, an art object. So I'm basically going through my resource folder, pulling out several things that I might want to include in my journal, in my artist's book. And I... I wanted to make a book that was a bit smaller than the journal I made last year because I didn't get anywhere near finishing that journal last year. So my intention for this year, and I think this is why I'm seeing it more as a developing piece of art rather than a journal as such, is that I have a kind of vision in mind for where I want to take it. And as it develops throughout the course of the year, I'll say a bit more about that. But you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you call your book, whether you call it a book, a journal, a visual journal, a glue book, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's just about making something of that sort. I'm also going to use some of these papers. I pulled these out last week to make some folders for my resource folder. They're not papers I'm likely to use any other way. So I'm going to take the pieces off this that I quite like. So my back piece is going to be roughly six inches square and the front piece just a little bit smaller than that. So I'm just roughly measuring these papers just to cut them down to size and I'm just going to literally tear them down. So, as I tear various papers into the, the size that I want, let me just say a little bit about the book that I'm going to make. I'm going to do a different type of binding than you've probably seen me do on here before. This type of binding will not be for everyone. It's uh, a little bit more challenging, but, you know, sometimes it's good to challenge ourselves. It's a type of binding that I actually like. It's called the Japanese stab binding and I will explain it in quite some detail as we go along. But of course you don't need to do this type of binding. Uh, I have lots of videos with different styles including no sew bindings so I'll leave links to, to playlists of different sorts of journals just in case you want to bind it in a different way. But what I'm doing is I'm making sure that none of my papers are bigger than six by six and each page will be round about that size. And here you can see them. Now I do end up actually adding in a few more. So these pages are not going to be folded. They're going to be bound in like this. So some of them are a bit shorter. Some of them you'll see I've kind of folded over. That's fine. That's to give a bit of interest through my book. 
So what I'm going to do is to sew down that left hand side using this Japanese technique of binding. So what I want to do first of all is to measure out where I'm going to do the holes. Now when I do this style of binding I always do an uneven number of holes. I'm going to take it in about a centimetre and a half from the edge. I'm just marking that very roughly and of course this fabric that I'm using, this canvas, is uh, fraying at the edges and I quite like that. So I'm just looking at there, trying to do my arithmetic, seeing how I can fit in seven holes because I want to do seven. I would either do, depending on the size of a book this way, I'd either do three, five or seven or in fact if it was bigger still I might do eleven, I might do fifteen, I always do on an even number. So you can't see it terribly well there but I've got little dots made. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take an awl now and just punch through. Now underneath that drop sheet it is actually a craft mat of sorts so I'm just going to push that right through making sure I go through both pieces and then I'll just go over it again to make sure that the hole is actually big enough. So there you can just see the holes very roughly. So just pushing through. Looks a bit scary in terms of where my fingers are but you know I can basically feel where I'm going to be poking through. Now this could be done with paper on the outside, it doesn't have to be canvas, I just happen to have canvas. There I've got another couple of pieces, I came across some caddy paper which is nice and thick and this will give this book a little bit of kind of substance to it, it'll make it feel a bit more sturdy. That piece on the front there, I del deliberately wanted it to show through, to show although the book would be closed I wanted to be able to see that. All I'm doing now is making a template so that I can then poke through the other papers. I do this then I think the line's running off a little bit so I do it again at the other edge of the paper. So yes that first piece of paper that will show at the front of the journal uh, I was gifted that by someone and I've had it sitting for such a long time and I thought, you know, this is too lovely a piece of paper not to use. Uh, it felt precious, it is precious, but it needs to be used and what better way than to put it into this, this book of mine. So there I go, just repunching my template and then what I'll do is I will take a few papers at a time and I will punch through all of them. Now of course this could be done with a normal type of punch if you wanted to make the holes a little bit bigger and actually making them a little bit bigger would in some ways be better for this style but it's not absolutely necessary. So there you go, you'll see that I'm just going through that first bundle of papers you won't see it terribly well just because of the patterns. I'm just going to go through it again just to make the holes that little bit bigger. And then I'll take just a few papers each time and do the same thing. And hopefully by using a template I can have them all lined up together. Okay, so I'll make my way through them all. So I now have them all done and I have them in the order that I want them to run. Just showing you there, I put a tick at the on the template through the holes that I wanted to use in case I got mixed up. So I thought about different things to use to actually bind it, but I've just gone with this embroidery thread and I'm not splitting it in any way. I'm just going to use, I don't know if there's five threads in it or whatever, but I'm just going to use it like that. And what I've basically measured is roughly five lengths from top to bottom of my book. Just going to clip these together just to hold them in place a bit. And then I've got this on double speed because it took me about half an hour to do this, but I'm going to talk you through it. If, if you don't want to watch the detail of this, obviously jump on a bit. But I've gone through 
from the front of the journal through that middle hole and I'm going to go through all the papers right through the middle hole all the way to the back cover. So just feeding it through each of the papers to make sure at the beginning that I get it correctly in place. Now, as I say, this, this type of uh, binding is a little bit more difficult than say the basic pamphlet stitch. I've done the basic pamphlet stitch lots and lots of times, but I just thought this time I'd do something different. I, I enjoy doing this type of binding, albeit it does take a bit longer. You'll see from time to time the embroidery thread does kind of knot a little bit, but that's that's okay. Just clipped that end of thread there. I wanted a nice long thread there because there's something I want to do later on. So that's through at the back and what I'm doing now is going down the way to the next hole down and from the back I will go through all the papers and it will come out at the second hole down. And so far so good. Just have to keep shuffling the covers and the papers just making certain so then I just go straight down to the next hole and again I go right through it. And at this stage there's still scope to spread the papers out to make sure I'm, I'm going through the correct place. It does get more difficult as the binding goes on. Now you could simply do a kind of almost a running stitch up and down this that would that would work well. I just like the look of the Japanese style. So now that I've got that I'm then from the back going to go through what is the bottom hole and again just feeding it through all the papers. As I say if, if you don't want to see this please do just jump ahead but there may be somebody out there that would like to see how to do this. So now what I'm going to do is go right down and round the bottom to the back and bring it up through that first hole. Again, I've still got scope to kind of move the papers a bit one by one. And I'm going to try and get it through that hole as far as possible. I do try when I'm doing this not to go through the actual thread itself because that can cause problems, although there's always a way out of it. So now that I'm back through that bottom hole, I'm just tightening that thread there. I just don't want to lose it and I don't want it to get caught up. So what I'm going to do now is go round sideways and back through that first hole. Now if you did want to try this, what I would suggest is you just watch one step, stop the video, do it, then start, watch the next step, do it, you know, stop the video, watch the next bit and, and so on. That's the way I originally learned this years ago. So I'm now going to the second hole up, going back through that. And it's starting to get a little bit tighter here because the pages below the way are, are, are starting to be bound in and of course the hole's not so big that it can go through easily. It also didn't help that this needle actually had a bit of rust on it which was silly. I noticed that and I should have just gone and changed it right away but not to worry. There we go. So I've gone through it, taken out little knots And I realised there that my tail from the start had got in the way. And now what I'm going to do is come over the side again and back to that second hole. Now there are actually different ways of doing this and uh, I've done this I think a couple of different ways at times but this kind of works for me. So you can see that starting to take shape. So on the back now I'm going up through third hole from the bottom and going all the way through. 
It requires a bit of patience. Just shuffling the papers there, making sure all the ends are as straight as they can be because there's more chance of pushing them straight through the holes. The fact that I'd added in some thick caddy paper didn't help because that was quite difficult to get it through that at times. So I'm now back on the front. Just clipping that starter thread in place again. Then again, I'm going to go to the back and through that hole again. So again, we're still on the, the third hole up. And right through there. So now what I'm going to do is go through that centre hole. And you'll see that what I do here is once I go through that, I kind of change what I'm, I'm doing and almost start this side as if it was the very beginning again. So I'm almost doing the exact same process as I did with that first bit. So I've gone through the middle hole and this is where it's possible to, to do a couple of different ways. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the back up to the next hole. So it's now the third hole from the top. And at this point, it's just a case of going through all the holes until I get to the top hole. So I've just sped this up a little bit more. So in through that next hole, which is the second from the top, all the way through, and then through the top one. Then at this point, we start to fill in, I kind of call it the squares. So here we go, I've slowed it back down again. So this time I'm going to go over. So over that top and back through that top hole. Just showing it from, from the back there. Again, just take my time to go through. Now I see at this point that there's a, actually a looseness in the thread. Uh, so what I do want to do is to try and tighten it as I'm going along. Now you may recall I said earlier that in some ways it's best to try and not go directly through the thread, although it gets difficult. So what I've done here is I've then brought it over the side and I'm going back through here and I do encounter a little bit of difficulty. I can see there a loose thread in between the pages, it's not quite pulled fully to. I take it back out, start to work my way through again. And you can see there that I'm just starting to struggle a little bit. I'm trying to tighten the threads or something not quite right. Now this is where if this kind of happens, you can just work your way back to where you put the thread through try pulling it, which is what I'm doing here, working it through. But there's definitely something inside, probably in between the pages, that isn't quite right. So all I do here is I end up, I think I take the needle right off and then I just carefully pull the threads out. It's as if there's little bits of knots. It's just the threads separating there. So I take that right off and then just pull it back to the last bit where I was kind of happy with it. It's a bit annoying, but it's just one of those things. Now, of course, now the thread's all separated and can't get through the needle. So what I tend to do here, oh, I must have got it on. It must be later on. I, I couldn't get it back on. But there we go. I've looped it round the top again. I'm going back through that hole. There does come a point where I have to put glue on the thread just to get it through the needle. So I now do the side one across the spine, back through. Yeah, stabbed myself there. Okay, and you can see it's starting to build up. So I go down to the next hole down. So this is the second from the top. Push through that. That one went through reasonably well. Then over to the front. So I'm creating my square again. 
down to the middle one and I thought I was at the end here, I was getting excited and I pushed, tried to push the needle through and of course it broke which was kind of silly of me. So I've pulled out another needle, I've pulled out those little twi tw uh, twires, tweezers, pliers uh, in case I need to pull the needle through with that and I'm just putting a bit of a glue on the end of my thread. I'll leave that to harden just for a second and then I should be able to get it through my needle much easier. And that's it. So here I go back to that one. This one is getting quite difficult to get through so I'm just wiggling it. This needle is also a bit shorter. I should have had one of my book binding needles out but I didn't. So I keep wiggling, keep wiggling, it's coming and then I can use the pliers just to pull it through. And I don't know, for some reason there I thought I'm finished. Taking those little knots out again. Got excited. Realising I need to go back there. Pulling it through again. Yeah, and this is where I took the needle off thinking I'm just going to tie these together and that's it done. And then I realised I hadn't done that, that last square. So, need to re-thread the needle. So of course I go down to the middle hole, just straightening my threads there, down to the middle hole, all the way through to the back. And by now there's not much room within the papers to see, so just hoping that the holes are all lining up nicely. Push it through, again use the pliers to pull it right through. Then what I want to do is to knot it on the front there so that it's in line. Now I'll leave these threads long because I have got an idea for something else I want to put on here but uh, yeah I, I will decide that at a future point. So let's take a quick look. I am going to do some more work on the cover. So what I like to do at this stage is just to fold the pages over because of course you don't get that outside edge. This way it, it lies actually reasonably flat compared to some journals and so long as you've bound it tight enough there shouldn't be any real movement in here. So I think in the end I had, I think it was 16 individual pages. So I do want to put something on the cover here and I'm kind of drawn to using some natural elements. So these are pieces of tree bark that have just not naturally come off a tree. I've had them sitting around for ages so I know that there's not any little creatures in there that I'm going to harm. I've got that pressed flower. I've got a feather gathered another feather in the garden this morning. So all I'm doing at this point is looking at different ways I might arrange these. There's that bigger feather. Just thought that could have gone down that spine quite nicely. So just playing about here to see what, what I want on this. I decided I'll keep it simple with just a piece of bark and a hydrangea flower. Now, I was looking at maybe putting a little tab on that half piece of the cover. Then I thought, hmm, maybe I should just make a closure for it. I wasn't going to, but I had this rick rack, I think you call it, lying about for ages. So just looking here at what sort of length I might want on it. And I decided to attach it to the back cover rather than to the front cover. And then it will just pull around from the back. And all I'm going to do is three simple stitches in there, something like three anyway, just to hold that in place. And I just use that same colour of embroidery thread. I 
and that will give me sufficient to wrap around my book if I want to do that. If I decided against it, it's easy enough to take off. So back to my piece of bark and the hydrangea flower that had been pressed. So all I'm going to do now is take some 3-in-1 glue and I'm going to glue that down and into place. Just going to put some deli paper behind that because it is possible that the glue will go through the canvas. It is quite thick canvas but I don't want to take any ch uh, chances of it sticking to that front page. So I'll just simply glue the backs of both of these and then stick them down. So I need a fair amount of glue on this, but I don't want so much that it's all going to come out the edges, although any that does go on the cover will actually end up just going clear anyway. What I might do at a future point is to put something like a gloss medium over both, but I'll decide on that once they're dry. So once they're in place, that is basically my little book made and uh, I can start working in it whenever. Lots of pages in it to work on. I like the way that it's looking. I've gone for quite muted tones in this. There's obviously a couple of pages that are that little bit brighter. Now of course Nina will have a video this week and I will leave a link to her video below and I do hope this has given you some inspiration for a book or journal that you might want to create yourself. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Do take care. I'll leave links to everything else in the description box below. Thanks so much. Bye for now.